Assalamu alaikum. It's been quite some time since I've posted any videos on this. I am still around. I have been busy. Um, I was in a career break. I did some traveling, did some house moving, um, been doing, settling into the new adult life or paying all the bills and started a new role as well this year. So I've been quite occupied and I've been just trying to be, get back into a rhythm so I can uh, focus on some more content. Um, but today I am going to be doing an important video and I've made some notes for it as well. And it's going to be about apprenticeships and more importantly, how to secure an apprenticeship, which I'm sure many of you think about, but many of you have no idea how to go about it. So I plan to give you a game plan, um, how to approach it, how to be ahead of the curve. And I think if you follow these steps, you will definitely make it in terms of securing an apprenticeship. Um, and the reason why I do this is because, I mean, if you've been following the channel, you will know I was an apprentice myself. I've spoke to a lot of apprentices. I've done a lot of outreach for apprenticeships. I've been on interview panels for apprenticeships. Um, so I, I've done a lot in this space and I always try to champion apprenticeships, especially against university. Um, unless, again, I only really would consider university if I'm going to a really good university like Oxbridge or if I'm doing something like medicine where I have no choice but to go for university. Otherwise, everything else, I would consider an apprenticeship first. And there's ranging levels from level three, level four, and of course, the degree apprenticeship, which is the best of both worlds. A uh, degree with no debt. Um, but one thing I do find is uh, a lot of people don't have a game plan. And what I mean by game plan is trying to be proactive with how to secure a apprenticeship. I also should say as well, before I go on, um, if you are a person that's lost, um, that is just going to college for the sake of it and just thinking, you know what, I'm going to go to uni and do a business degree and you have no real direction, let me stop you right here and tell you, don't do that business degree. Don't do it. Just stop. Take a career break. I mean, sorry, take a gap year if you have to. Don't waste your time doing a business degree, especially if you have no idea where you're going. Honestly, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Um, in most cases, you might be an exception. Um, but I don't think you're all exceptions. Um, no offense. Um, but just, yeah, I've, I've seen many people that go on to do it and they didn't really do any, do any internships or any experience. Maybe one person I know that did it and has got a graduate scheme now, but a lot just piled on a big amount of debt, which is only, I think, increasing in terms of repayments and the return on investment is not good so i just need to say that if you know someone that's saying i'm going to be doing a business degree and, and you kind of tell they don't really know why they're doing that especially if it's at a mid university then stop them and tell them to apply for an apprenticeship tell them to watch this bloody video uh, for their own sake and you know to if you want if you if, if you want to study business start your own business um sorry i, I just had to really say that and, and get that off my chest but anyway, your game plan for an apprenticeship. Let's begin. Um, three qualities that you're going to need first. The three P's, I say, be proactive, plan slash prepare, and practice. Uh, these three elements are very, very important and key if you're going to go about securing an apprenticeship. So I've kind of broken it down into three sections uh, with steps in each one. Um, so if you make notes or whatever, then you can plan and secure yourself an apprenticeship of course which is why you're probably here watching this and listening to this so number one or section one stay informed if you don't know you don't know um if you're not aware you're not aware uh, so sometimes there's a lot of pressure vehicles going out there and people have no idea um so it's important to be in the loop and it's important to know what opportunities there are out there. So step one. Um, so depending on your age, I imagine uh, this will probably be relevant for the 16 to 21 year old age range. But if you are above that, you can still apply for apprenticeships. There's not normally an age limit unless it's specified. But what I do say as step one is, and if, and if possible, start early 
start early. The earlier you start, the more prepared you're going to be. It's as simple as that. So if you are, let's say, going to college and you're in your first year, start applying then. Or if you're in year 11, start applying then. And what's the wisdom behind this? It's preparation. Uh, You can't go into a sport or a game with no knowledge of it and expect to do well. How do they tell you to pass your exams? What's one of the most effective ways? It's pass papers. Why is that? Because you're learning how they ask questions. You're learning how they will frame their wording. You're learning how to play the game. With apprenticeships, often you, you have very little to no interview experience at all. You have no experience of the processes and you basically just go in hoping you secure an apprenticeship and then nine times out of ten uh, you probably fail uh, that's that's the reality of it especially if it's a degree apprenticeship vacancy so i would say start early let's say hypothetically speaking you start applying in year 11 um, and it's not to say you so there's a reason why i'm saying start early it's not to say you're going to get an offer at that stage but it's essentially you get practice at the online test you get practice at potential like those those automated video interviews and you get to learn what they're asking you and then you get to know what to prepare for going forward so if i was in like year 11 let's just say hypothetically i finished my gccs um and i figured yeah you know what i i, I do want to do an apprenticeship i'm interested in tech then what i would advise my past self is start applying so i can get familiar with the process and the more i know about the process the better prepared i'm going to be for when the time comes when I'm ready to do an actual apprenticeship. So I might not have the A-levels yet to do a degree level apprenticeship, but I have the practice of the online test and I have the insight for that. And, and there's a way in my second stage of the practice, I will tell you how to do that but in, in two words. It's called burner accounts. Um, so I'm sure you can kind of gather what I might be implying there. So yeah, start early. It allows you to embrace rejection because there's no pressure. and It allows you to learn because you see where you failed. And you go again. Like normally people pay for online tests, like social judgment tests, English tests, numerical tests, that stuff. But you can get a free one just by going online, applying for a real one and getting a real taste of what, what it's like. And if you pass, then it's, you know, okay, I'm not bad at this. If you don't pass, then at least you know early rather than when the time comes when you're in the second year of college, let's just say you've got the choice of university and apprenticeships, you're applying for apprenticeships, you fail, you end up going to university. Uh, because you have no other choice and you know family won't take a gap year. Um, so that's step one, start early. Step two is, again, this is all part of staying, being informed, look for opportunities. Uh, I think I got an email once and a guy asked me, what can I do? Where can I find opportunities? And this is the response I gave uh, in a screenshot. So have a look at that. But essentially, it's quite simple. If you are looking for an apprenticeship, uh, you probably have a mobile phone, you have Google, you can easily search for opportunities. Um, and there's many benefits to this. Um, number one, sign up for job alerts. So like civil service jobs and SES apprenticeships, I know that they have job alerts. So if you sign up for apprenticeships, as soon as the apprenticeship comes up, you'll get an email. Because a lot of people, they don't have apprenticeships because they don't want to. Sometimes they just miss the deadline and then they got to wait for a whole year or something. So if you're in the loop and you know when they're coming out or you know as and when they come out, then you're ahead of most people or a good number of people. I don't have any idea on that. It's just an opinion. Um, so yeah, sign up for job alerts so you know when the jobs come out. Uh, and also, again, if you're doing this early, like this is a junior first year or year 11, whatever, first year of college, year 11, uh, then you can at least start to know what requirements they're asking for. Because uh, I was asked, what do I need? What skills do I need? Uh, the job requirements, the skills requirements on every job spec tells you what you need. Uh, and apprenticeships have that. Normally they don't expect a lot, but there's certain qualities that they might have. And then if you know what they are, then at least you can start mentally preparing for it and you can start maybe actually preparing for it if you were to target work experience on your project that you do you can think about what skills or what experiences you could try to get from it to make it the most relevant um and also um yeah so you, you can know what to ask you for uh, you can also diversify your options don't just apply for one don't think you're just going to become like a businessman and you're not going to apply for any apprenticeships 
which is I mean you can do that do a business if you want to but have options have that university UCAS application in the background if you really need to apply for two three four five apprenticeships I would advise so you've got options when it comes the time comes you don't want to put your eggs in one basket let's just say you apply for five your main one you didn't get but your second and third choice you got you can still go for it and worst case scenario if that doesn't work out apply for your first choice again the following year um you gotta think outside the box you can't just think one apprenticeship one vacancy if i don't get it i go to university and that's that you gotta really be creative have different options and if you go to a level three apprenticeship let's just say and you want to do like a level five or a degree, degree level it could be that okay where i'm doing a level three internally there might be an opportunity for them to give me a level five afterwards because employers can just put staff on apprenticeships afterwards as if you're doing a level three hypothetically anything oh, i'll do level five there might be an opportunity for you to do level five where you are in, in your level three apprenticeship employer so say nhs level three i do and let's just say they have a level five and there's a possibility that i could do it afterwards if they sign me up then that's an option as well so it's not always oh i've got to get a degree level approach sometimes you've got to be clever i think <clears throat> even if i get level three even if i get myself in the door then i've got options a worst case scenario you are building work experience approach is like a job that you can technically leave whenever you want approach is like a job you can technically leave whenever you want if you had a notice i don't normally advocate that but if it's not working out uh, let's say if say you do it for 12 months and it's not working out then at least you've got 12 months of experience and you can use that to apply for other apprenticeships or if you really have to go to university then you can start you can, st- you can still go to university especially if you've got your level three qualifications um so that's yeah that that is step two so knowing what opportunities there are if you have to google nhs apprenticeships world phone apprenticeships bt apprenticeships do that use your time your free time wisely because i know you look that age group will have a lot of it so find out what opportunities there are what they're after and that will help you to prepare um and like i said it's like a job so you can apply for other ones you can so if you do a platform level three apprenticeship and you see a level five or one one year in um then you might think oh you know what i want to do that high level one you can still apply whilst you're on your other one you're not committed again i say finish it if you can and you know get get the qualification but if another opportunity comes up and you apply and get it and it's better for you then by all means there's no written rules on this um and step three get insight advice from either current apprentices from insight sessions um even maybe like those careers fairs and stuff like employability workshops um or sometimes on a apprenticeship app, uh, vacancy, there might be an email address there. So you can reach out to the recruitment manager maybe. Or you can find employees on LinkedIn, my favorite thing. LinkedIn, I always talk about LinkedIn, uh, especially if you follow the podcast. Um, but let's just say you do a hiring manager email address on an apprenticeship vacancy. And let's say you were clever and you thought, let me email this person or let me try to arrange a call with this person i suspect more likely your email um and you ask them hi i'm really interested in this apprenticeship what advice or what what was what the most important qualities you're looking for in, in a top candidate and they might tell you that and they most likely will tell you that because they're not there to catch you out or they might give you some pointers on what you can prepare for and just by that email or phone call if you so dare you'll be more informed and that will put you ahead of other applicants. So those are the three steps, I would say, for section one, staying informed. So start early, look for opportunities, sign up for job alerts, get insight from current apprentices. Oh, by the way, I've got a podcast that I will have emailed, not emailed, sorry. I've, oh, by the way, I've got a podcast where um, I literally have interviews with different apprentices and have left their contact details where you can reach out to them. So, you know, that might be a starter starting point for you um okay so that's section one i'm trying to keep this short but i I have this bad habit of talking too much um, but i'm hoping you find this valuable and again this is like a a game plan for you to go about securing an apprenticeship and if you're already informed then you might want to come into the section which is about practice Um, if you have knowledge and you don't take any action then that knowledge is useless
So with knowledge comes action and with action is practice. So I mentioned before about starting early and then you might think, how can I start early when I might not even be at the eligible age? And I said two words, burn their accounts, which basically makes free practice. You can note down the questions that come up. You can practice the questions that come up and you can record yourself if it's like an automated video interview, not the real life video interviews or like a real life virtual interview. But if there's those interviews where they pre-record the answers, then you can record yourself, see how you do and see how you can improve. Um, and I think a burner account can allow that. Um, especially like, as long as you're not applying in the same application window, I don't foresee there being any issues. But if I was going back in time, I would say to myself, apply if you're worried about your details, just give, if you cancel, just, just say you're eligible, blah, blah, you meet the age requirements and then just apply and get practice, at least the, the online stages. This is a good way to get a lot of real life practice for that. Um, and then again, more practice, more equals more competency, more competency equals more confidence, and that equals better results. So that's step one for practice. Step two, um, so I've kind of done step two for the personal statement slash the why question, which they might ask on the written stage, or they could also ask at the interview stage as well, uh, when you're applying online or like when you're actually doing the interview. Um, so this is just a structure for the personal statement part of things. So the personal statement and how to structure it. The first paragraph, here's four things you can focus on. Um, interest in the industry, I'm interested in working at telecoms, I find it intriguing or engineering or railway, whatever. Um, I'm keen to learn, grow and develop. And, uh, and this, I believe this apprenticeship opportunity is perfect for me um, because of my interest in the industry, blah, blah, blah. I like the values of the company and it really resonates with me. If you have any examples of that, um, like honesty, integrity, how you kind of live that with your lifestyle, especially if you're like, uh, if it aligns with your faith as a Muslim, um, and the goals of the company and want to be a part of it. So if the company has a goal by 2025 to become more sustainable, how you're intrigued by that, how you sort of you know value green technology, and you know you want to be a part of that and want to contribute towards that, it's a good way to kind of show your interest. Um, so that's the first paragraph. So yeah, yeah, I'm really interested in this role in the industry, healthcare. I really care about helping people and, and serving people and making their life better. Um, as is, this is an apprenticeship because I'm really, really like keen to learn, grow and develop in, in this industry that I have a passion for. And this is the perfect opportunity for me. The values that you have, you know, honesty, integrity, um, are values that I resonate with and I try to live my life by and, and, I, and this I feel really strongly about. So I love that these are your values as, as a company. And where your company wants to go in terms of serving people better, being more efficient, um, I, I strongly value that and I want to play a valuable part in that. If you're saying that, they'd be like, yeah, you know what, this person is quite interested. Um, and then the rest of it, uh, if you look at, like I mentioned before, the um, on the job descriptions, on the job specs, they will have essential requirements or requirements that they need from uh, applicants. Uh, you can basically use that as invisible bullet points in terms of how you're going to structure the rest. So you can have like three or four paragraphs uh, talking about, okay, so you guys, an essential skill, for example, is teamwork skills. Um, I believe I'm a strong candidate because I have strong teamwork and skills and I've worked in teams on this college presentation project or this voluntary work that I do outside of work or when I help out charities, there's a lot of teamwork in and I love being involved in that. and. I see the value of that and I feel like I possess good, I'm a good team worker. Uh, customer service skills, yeah. I, for example, try to go the extra mile to serve customers and give them the best experience. And, you know, if customer service skills are one of their essential requirements and you're saying, I've got customer service skills and you can maybe give like a small example of that, nothing too long. Like, like I just said, um, I have strong customer service skills. When I worked in this retail work experience, I was took pride in serving customers and helping people and this was a skill that I developed very well. Um, and then so on and so forth. And then by the, so you've got the central criteria. And essentially, you're just, you're just telling them what they want to hear. You're showing them, that, and ideally, if you've got the skills, and if you've, again, started early and tried to be clever and do different work experiences and projects around those skills, then it'll be straightforward for you. And then by the end of it, like, thank you for reading my application. I hope I can discuss this further with you. Um, you know, look forward to discussing this further. Thank you for taking time to read this. And that's it. I think that's a 
a basic template or basic like structure that you can use your personal statement with um and that again you can bring to life at the interview and any examples you mentioned you can also bring to life at the interview which leads me on to step three the interview how great is that um interview practice you may have come across the star technique situation task action result um practice it until you can say without looking at your notes so i would do an advocate making a note to start off with just to get some ideas down on what you can sort of say with your examples using that template um and you can also take notes at the interview as well but i'll mention that in a bit more detail soon uh, but your situation you basically you just imagine you talk to someone and you tell them the situation you want to build a picture so in this case um let's just say i'm playing for a nhs apprenticeship in the pharmacy or something like that so in the situation a customer came to me they looked quite distressed and quite lost and english wasn't their first language so they had struggled they're struggling to communicate and they didn't know how to go about getting their medicine um, and they didn't have a prescription with them so that's the situation and that's not the problem a customer can't english isn't good they've got a problem they don't know how to, how to get the prescription they don't have a prescription they prescription in the first place and they seem quite distressed task in the sentence i took the responsibility to help this customer to well i took the responsibility to reassure this customer and help them with this problem so again this is a very simple one you can you can elaborate on that more and then the main body action so i firstly reassure the customer that not to worry that i'm here to help them um i don't have notes on this but i'm, I'm basically freestyling um i asked them if they went to their gp and what happened in terms of like you know why don't they have the prescription i tried to understand why they don't have one uh i found out that they left they didn't pick up their prescription from the gp and they weren't aware that that's where they had to get their prescription from at the reception um so to check their understanding and to make sure that i was communicating clearly and they were getting the message um i was telling them what they needed to do and i was asking them to summarize it back to me so that i could check their understanding and make sure they had the correct understanding and i used my initiative to to slowly communicate to you know try to use my body language more and try to show them understanding what they're saying and trying to get through to the main problem to really help them um you know i built trust with the customer by using this approach and i told them i gave them the instructions to go to the gp uh the reception ask for their prescription give them their name and then come back i reassure them that i'm going to help them i'm going to be here for them if they come back today and i'll process their prescription for them so the customer felt very reassured they know they knew what they needed to do they had a clear sense of direction and i communicated the message across clearly to them even though english wasn't their first language and as a result they felt reassured they left and went to the gp they came back got their prescription which i then processed and gave them the medicine and the customer was really happy and relieved at the end of it and i delivered a, a great great customer service to them as simple as that um, and then anything else that you have you can basically use a star technique to flesh it out and it yeah practice talk in front of a camera like i am um record yourself as well if, if you're uncomfortable with the camera for voice notes whatever and then see if you're saying that clearly action is the most important part i took the initiative i communicated clearly i took responsibility not we not she not he not whatever gender you you you, you know you are um whatever pronoun you are i that's the biggest that's the most important thing because i know what you did not what so and so did um so that's that's yeah interview practice with the star technique make your notes beforehand on a document or on paper and then practice it and once you get fluent at it you'll be fine at the interview um you know don't be late of course feel free to take your notes with you to help you kind of prompt your examples if you get stuck or if you get brain freeze um 
it's quite a useful tip take your time if they do ask a question and you are suddenly panicking just say I need a moment to calm my thoughts you can make some notes as well in terms of how you're going to give your example um, there's nothing wrong with that uh, be interested to be interesting if you feel like you are not interested in person whatsoever and you have nothing at all to contribute to the world or society and you feel like why the hell they offering me this opportunity then just ask them questions oh so you know your experience in this area what's been your career story how did you get to this company uh, you know, how are things going? Uh, what advice? Oh, no, sorry, we're not say that beginning. Like, yeah, what's been your career journey? How's your day going? Uh, what, what's going on at the company? Like, you know, um, just find out about the role. What do you do? Uh, is this like, are you really just a recruiter or do you like get involved with this area of work? Uh, what's happening in the area? Blah, blah, just just small talk that shows you're interested and you want to know about their story because people love talking about themselves, right? So you can ask, oh, you know, what's... Um, what, what role do you do and how long have you been in the company? That's an easy way to just break the ice. And it shows you're interested as well. And when you're interested, you come across as interesting. And at the end, it's worth having good questions to ask because that leaves a good impression. Um, one question I would advocate to ask is, what advice would you give to an apprentice starting this role? Um, you know, what, what does success look like to you in this role? Um, what are the next steps like how can I what what learning development opportunities are there in this role or what can I do at the end of the apprenticeship those three or four questions uh, if you ask sincerely um, it sounds like you you are genuinely interested in the role and they they will have that impression of you at the end of it Um, and of course stuff like body language you know coming across as confident positive body language smiling a little bit not smiling too much but not come across as a miserable sod. Don't come across as a miserable sod. And you will likely have a good first impression. And don't compare yourself to others. Sometimes you might see people there like in their 20s, maybe 30s. And you might think, I've got no chance. Especially if you're like a 18-year-old with no experience. Uh, but I can tell you, or I can reassure you, uh, that people generally suck at interviews. They People are genuinely rubbish. Because um, a lot of them don't really have the social skills. They don't really do any of the research. Uh, they don't really know like how to use the body language and how to structure the examples and yeah don't worry about them if you focus on yourself and do what i've said you will have a very good chance and again uh, post interview make notes of those interview questions that came up um because and if you're working uh if you're doing it remotely virtually then you know record yourself doing it so you can hear your responses uh, because if you, for example, didn't pass that interview and you really want it to be in that area, then now you have interview questions relevant to that apprenticeship or that area of work, which is only going to help you the next time. So you can, again, for the interview, you can learn. Um, and even at the end, uh, you can ask for feedback and be like, okay, if I, I don't know what the outcome of this is, but if I haven't done well, if there's any feedback that you have for me, I would honestly welcome it because I know that will help me going forward. So I would appreciate it, even if it's a couple of lines of feedback that you have, uh, I would really appreciate it. So even if you're saying that, they feel good because I think this person genuinely cares and they want to do well. Um, and of course, you should you should be caring. You should want to do well. It's not just faking it. Um, but it, it just shows that, that genuine sincerity. It, it has a good impression. And that's what you want. You want to be someone that's asking for advice, that's kind of asking for feedback because you're showing qualities of a good apprentice and you're showing humility. These are the people that want to nurture. They don't want to nurture some half assed uh, arrogant person that feels entitled to everything and that wants this, this is that for them. They want someone that's going to be sincere, that's going to try hard and wants to learn, that's eager to get feedback. Um, and that's, that's what they want. Who wouldn't want that, of course? Um, so that's the practice element. Uh, the last section um, is additional support so stuff like if you are neat which means not employed in education or in training uh, you can find boot camps from organisations like Generation UK I think Multiverse as well uh, they offer boot camps like 12 weeks I think it's 95 they pay for some of the expenses uh, like travel and by the end of it if you pass whatever or whatever their, their requirements are, 
then you can get a direct interview with employers and have a good chance of getting an apprenticeship at the end of it. So that's one way to the additional support. Uh, there's organizations like Careers Camp, uh, Brother Isa, he runs that. Um, they're using AI to support people who are applying for jobs and apprenticeships. And he's quite big on apprenticeships as well. So if you reach out to him, always, always <coughs> if you reach out to him or his organization, then there could be something there for you in terms of careers camp. Multiverse is another one. Uh, they offer quite a lot of boot camps and apprenticeships. They are like a provider. I think they are a recruiter as well. And they are, yeah, through boot camps, they work with partners. Um, so there's organizations like that. There's, of course, Ace Insights from Umbert, who was on the episode. I don't know which episode it was, but he was on one of the episodes, the most viewed one on the, on the, on the Believers Early Quest podcast. You can find out what he's doing with Ace Insights and attend one of those events uh, for additional support. Because if you find an a apprentice on a scheme that you like um, and they give you advice, they give you some pointers, uh, they can make you, give you some mock interviews as well. Uh, so that will be very valuable for you. Um, employability skills so if they are if you just google employability skills workshops sometimes organizations do like mock interviews or like uh, practice assessment centers if you can get one to one of them then that will also help you be more prepared and that's another way of additional support that you can get and of course you can um, watch the podcast and listen to those episodes because there's lots of gems of wisdom in those uh, not me championing my own podcast and plugging it in, but yeah, I, I have to because there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, and then the final step, and I want to wrap this up, make dua and keep going. Have the faith because if you believe you can succeed or if you, if you believe you can or if you believe you can't, you're probably right. It starts with the mind and the heart first. You've got to really push yourself. You've got to have faith. Make dua, have faith believe in yourself because if you don't don't expect anyone else to believe in you and keep going embrace rejection embrace, especially if you start early and uh, the rejections will just be teachers good teachers for you they'll tell you what you need to know and uh, they'll correct you in terms of what you're making some mistakes and the earlier you make them the the better really um, so on that note I hope I've not missed out on anything crucial but there's three sections stay informed practice additional support and in each section there's three steps or four steps um, this is a game plan make notes don't just leave this and do nothing because otherwise you just wasted your time really make notes make a plan have a strategy because nine out of ten young people don't do this most of you aren't proactive at all i've seen it uh, but i've seen the ones that are proactive and i've seen how quickly they secure the pressure and how far they can go. So really, it's on you. You have the time. You have the energy. Um, get stuck in. Just take action. Even if you make mistakes, it's fine. But the fact that you're taking action and do something about it, you will secure an apprenticeship. And with this game plan, if you are proactive, if you do take the steps, I'm 100% certain you will secure one. Whether it's level 3, level 4, or degree level, just follow this blueprint and then go for it. So yeah, if you found this video useful, uh, please do give it a like. Yeah, that's, that's what it is nowadays. I've not done YouTube for a while. Uh, if you have any comments or any feedback or any questions, do comment below and I will endeavor to respond. And if I've not clarified anything, again, just ask a question in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll try to respond and help out. But I'm doing this because... Uh, Everyone says during a apprenticeship, nobody tells you how to go about it. Uh, every so often you'll see a post about how you do is trash. And you know, I am kind of a believer in that. Um, I think you are, we still put a lot of pressure on young people to, to, to decide what they want to do when they don't know what, what they want to do. And they don't know how to do it. So this is a how-to uh, video. Um, and I apologize that it's gone on for so long. Uh, but I think, with apprenticeships is the support mechanism especially in college and education isn't there because they promote universities more so i am doing this video trying to condense it as much as i can just to give you a guide and pointers of what you can do going forward so yeah hope you've enjoyed this make notes take action 
and inshallah you will secure your apprenticeship so this is the early talent man i am back